Goodness, goodness, what does it mean to you? I think we have to move out of this idea of being good. Because as long as the church wants to come across as being good, we don't have time to actually do good. It's the gates of hell, which means we are at the gates of hell knocking. Do you understand the posture there? If we don't wrestle once and for all and settle that God really will take care of us being good, we got to focus on doing good. If we don't do this, we'll fall into religion. He's saying to us that my covenant to you is that every time I look at you, I will always have mercy on you. Friends, at some point, you and I have got to realize that we have to put our pride away and begin to put others first. Hey friends, I'm Naeem Fazel and welcome to Mosaic. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, glad you're here. Let us know where you are uh, for in, the, in the chat. We'd love to just kind of connect with you. If you've been a part of us for a while now, man, I miss you guys tremendously. And you know what? Uh, this Sunday, this Sunday, tonight at 7 o'clock, we're having a worship night and we'd love for you to be a part of that. You might have heard about it, so I want to make sure you come because we're going to baptize some people and in fact, we're actually going to ordain some ladies. Yes, we're going to be, it's going to be pretty historic and love for you to be a part of that. If you can't make it, it's all good. It's going to be live stream. But man, if you're in CLT, make sure you're here. Now, if you are listening to this message and um, Sunday the 21st has already passed, do not show up tonight because we will not be here. But if you're listening to this live, Come on out. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss it. And I'd love to meet you if I have not met you uh, since uh, COVID. So it's going to be a great night. Now, well, let's talk about this morning's topic. We've been in a series on the fruits of the Spirit. And this morning I want to talk about faithfulness. Yes, faithfulness. Now, as I was preparing for this, I, pr I had a pretty interesting uh, week. Um, it started off with me going to dinner with a guy, and he's from Kuwait, and he recently came back, and so we were just catching up, so we went to dinner. Obviously, yes, at an Arab place, and the food was amazing, as always. But as I was sitting there, I was reminded right at the end of uh, dinner why I love our culture so much, right? So what he did was he was like, hey, I got it. Now, what I mean by that is he paid for the meal. Now, it's a thing. It's a thing. When friends get together, one person pays for the entire meal. I grew up in that, okay? And strategically, your boy had to pick some uh, broke friends because if you pick some rich friends, they go out to fancy restaurants and then you end up eventually with the bill. And I was like, this is not going to work. So I kind of appreciate this Western culture just a little bit. But man, as I spent some time with them, I thought, man, I miss the uniqueness of our culture because there's so much into that. I mean, like words and, and accents and norms are so meaningful. A couple of days later, I actually ended up working with an Italian guy. Italian guy. Not like Jersey Shore Italian. Shout out to Vinny. Hello. No, 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 no. No, no a guy from Italy, like with a name and an accent uh, that I couldn't understand or pronounce. You know, shout out to Bergamo Church, our sister church in Italy, in Milano, and Giuseppe in Rome. Now, so, so like seriously Italian. And what a distinct, different culture, different language, has a lot of different cultural norms. Now, when you put them, them together, you find that it's, it's amazing. Diversity is amazing. It's fascinating. And it's so unique. And when you try to understand something in a culture that has so many different languages and so many different uh, norms, you, under, you begin to think that everything means something more. That things deeper. And the reason why this is not just uh, should be fa is fascinating to me and why it's actually important to you guys is because, or all of us, is because the scriptures are like that. They're highly diverse. Now they have, you know, they have 66 books come together, 40 some authors, but then also uh, three different languages. In fact, actually four, I would say, because like you've got uh, the, the Bible in, in Hebrew, right? Parts of it are in Hebrew, parts of it are in Aramaic, and then some parts are in Greek. Some chapters start off Hebrew, then go to Aramaic. And then you and I have a relationship with the scriptures in English. So just so you know, when we look into the scriptures, and when you do it on your, uh, on your own, understand that there is so much more depth that you might be missing out. 
They understand the context of what you are reading. And so when we look at the word faithfulness, which is our topic, and the reason why it's our topic is because it's part of our series. We've been in the book of Galatians. Do you remember that? If you're just joining us, you might not know this. It comes from chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. It says this, The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Joy, peace, um, love, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, topic today, gentleness, and self-control. Faithfulness. Have you heard a lot of sermons about faithfulness? I would say you probably haven't. I think you've heard a lot of sermons about faith. I mean, the reason why I say this is because I think faith um, has, you know, it's, it's connected to a felt need for us, right? It, it really is. And, I, and you've probably heard the, the need to have more faith because you've I'm sure you've heard of this passage of Scripture. It's found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And it says this, without, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Right there, right there, it's like, okay, let's have sermons about faith because we got to please God. But then it keeps on going, right? It says, and because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So what that means is you don't want to disappoint God. You want to please him, have more faith. You want to get what's coming, and if you want to have stuff, you need to have faith. And if you're not really getting the stuff you want, if you don't possess what you have, it's because of your lack of, ding, 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 faith. And so when we think of faithfulness, I think some of us think, well, faithfulness is basically having more faith. Like, more faith in God equals faithfulness. Could it be possible that that's just one layer of it, and there's more to it. Especially, like those two guys, uh, and like the Scriptures, when you put everything together, you go, okay, what is this? What could the word faith and faithfulness truly mean to us? What is God really saying to us in light of the fact that the Bible is so diverse and it's written in so many different languages? I think for that, we need to go to de defining the actual word Faith. And when you think of the word faith, you think of uh, the description of faith in the scriptures. Again, it, we go back to Hebrews. Hebrews says this. Have you heard this one? Now, faith is the confidence of what we hope for. It is the assurance of what we do not see. It is what the ancients were commended for. That's verse 1 and verse 2. Now, I think, I think verse 2 is the one we need to understand to really understand verse 1. He says, the, what the ancients were commended for. What were they commended for? Well, faith, bro, faith. And that's why they were faithfulness. That's why they had faithfulness. In fact, if some of you have read this passage and you are aware of this passage, you know that this passage is called the Hall of Faith because Paul begins to list all the people who acted in faith, and because of faith, they experienced some amazing, amazing things. And so it's called, hey, this is the kinds of people who had great faith. Now, could it be possible that there's a little bit more to the word faith? And it's, in fact, connected to the word faithfulness. Could it be possible that God is actually calling us not to just acts of faith, but a life of faithfulness? Again, not just acts of faith, but a life of faithfulness. I think that's what it's really saying here on a deeper level. Let me, let me tell you why. Because of the word faith. Now, uh, when it shows up in what well, the passages we read, remember, it showed up in Greek because it was translated in Greek. The word faith is translated in Greek. It was actually written, the Hebrews was written in Hebrew. It was written in that language. Then translated, the word faith was pistis uh, in Greek. It took on a Western definition of faith or faithfulness, which was not uh, the Jewish definition. Why is there a difference? Well, in fact, pistis is a Western uh, concept where it takes the word faith and it does this. I wrote it down so I won't mess this up. It generally places the action upon the subject rather than its object. Some of you guys are thinking the same thing I've thought when I read this. You're like, what does that even mean? Now, what that basically means is, is that the word faith is translated in a Western Greek language. It's translated belief 
in God or believe in God. Faith is believe in God. And that's why when we read the scriptures, we go, okay, when every time we think of faith or faithfulness, we think of believe in God. But, 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 in the actual language, Hebrew, uh, and the way the, this, this passage was written, the word faith is a very different word. In fact, it's kind of dear to, it kind of resonates with me because it's connected to the two languages I speak, which is um, uh, Urdu and Arabic. The word faith in Urdu and Arabic is the word iman or iman. Iman and iman are pretty similar, right? It's Urdu and Arabic. And Urdu and Arabic are connected a little bit uh, in certain words to, to the Jewish language. In the Jewish language, the word faith is the word imana. And imana, or ima, yeah, imana, is the word that, that's very different from the Western, um, you know, the Western concept of faith. Here's the difference. The uh, Greek pistis is a very passive orientation by nature. It's just passive. Believe in God. In Hebrew, in the Middle Eastern culture, the word is active by nature. What that means is it places the action upon the object. Okay, name, that's great, right? That's what you're thinking. What does that mean? Well, if pistis means believe in God, then imanu or ima, imana means support God. Believe in God, support God. Hold up, what? What, what, what? Yeah, every time you hear the word faith in the scriptures, it means, uh, in a lot of passages, it means this idea of, of supporting God, not just believing in God. The truth of the matter is, that is what God's calling us. Not this idea of believing him more, but actually living like him more. Like, not a, act, not a, not a life of, of, of faith because uh, it's acts of faith. No, it's a, it's a life of faithfulness. See, we love faith because we think of it as a gift, and we talk about it as a gift, and we preach about it as a gift. But God wants us to look at faith as a fruit, and it's called faithfulness. See, it's different, isn't it? Because faith is just believing Jesus. Faithfulness is actually becoming like him. And so that's what God wants us to understand. So when you and I read this passage, which is called the hall of faith, I would say, could it be deeper than that? Could it actually mean the hall of faithfulness? Could it not be just acts of amazing faith or miracles or uh, that, that people go, wow, I want to do that. I want to raise people from the dead. No, maybe it's stories of people who live their life in faithfulness. So just bear with me, okay? Or, or let's just try this for, for just, just to understand the scriptures a little deeper. Let's just say, think that the word faith is actually faithfulness every time I read this. So in Hebrews, let's start here. Hebrews chapter 11, we're going back to chapter 11, verse 8. It says, faith so let's, I'll, I'll put the word faithfulness. Faithfulness motivated Abraham to obey God's call and leave the familiar to discover the territory he was destined to inherit from God. So he left with only a promise and without even knowing ahead of time where he was going. Abraham stepped out in faithfulness. It keeps on going. It says his eyes of faith were set on the city. Now, let me just say that. His eyes of faithfulness, right? His eyes of faithfulness is set on the city with unshakable foundations, whose architect and builder is God himself. Sarah's faithfulness embraced God's miracle power to conceive, even though she was barren and was past the age of childbearing. For the authorities uh, of her, for, for the authority of her faith rested in the one who made the promise. She tapped into his faithfulness. Man, it keeps on going. As, as, I wish I could read all of this passage to you, but I love reading parts of it. So here's another part. Here is where the writer turns the corner. He talks about all these amazing things that took place and the people who experienced some profound things, but then he talks about the others. The others are the people who, who went through so much also in this hall of faith, which again, I would make the case, it's the hall of faithfulness, because here's what he says. He says, others, these are the others, others. Others were mocked, 
were mocked and experienced the most severe beating with whips. They were enchained and imprisoned. Some of these um, faith champions or faithful champions were brutally killed by stoning, being sawed in two or slaughtered by the sword. These lived in faithfulness as they went about wearing sheep, uh, goat skins and sheep skins. For clothing, they lost everything they possessed. They endured great afflictions and they were cruelly mistreated. He keeps on going. He said, these, these were the true heroes commended for their faith or faithfulness. Yet they lived in hope without receiving the fullness of what was promised to them. But now, and this is so awesome. It says, but now God has invited us to live in something better than what they had. Faith's fullness. Wow. Faith's fullness. See, that is the life that God is calling us to live. That is the, the, the fruit that God wants to grow in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not a, not, not a gift that, that does great acts of of faith, no, a life lived of faithfulness, a life lived supporting what God does. Could it be possible that is what God is trying to grow in us? This idea of like really being there and supporting, because supporting comes with this idea of like always being there, right? And faithfulness, obviously, even in the English language, means dedicated, committed, loyal. What if God is saying, I want you to live a life that's dedicated, committed, loyal to me and to other people. And that's what I want to grow in you. You see, I think this is a great conversation for us because right now we are learning to quit on people. We truly are. I mean, we've introduced, introduced a cancel culture um, in this time in history like no other. We're easily quitting on people and relationships. We're canceling people. And some, I believe, that we need to support, stop supporting, of, of course, because it's been, it's been full of evil and it's been full of injustice and bigotry. But man, I wonder sometimes, are we really quitting on some relationships? Because I think for some of us, I mean, we're quitting on people. We, we've stopped hanging out with people because of the last four years or because of these, uh, this election. Have we just stopped being faithful people when it comes to our relationships? And when you quit on relationships, it's so easy to quit on God. I mean, I know some people right now, and you know some people, right? Last year, this time, they were like, man, they loved God. They were singing the songs. They were online. They were like in it. They were like doing the thing. They were like swimming in an ocean of God's love. And now you're like, you see them on social media. You're like, where are they? Because they ain't swimming in no ocean of God's love. They're like, like skinny dipping in a swamp of toxic emotions. Yep, that's pretty much it. That's what I said. What did I say? Skinny dipping in a swamp of toxic emotions. That's exactly what they're doing. What happened? I think they just quit. They just quit on God. Quit on church. Quit on church, on, on God's people. Quit their faith. Man, that's why I think this... It's such an important conversation for us. And it's so important for us to understand what God's saying. Hey, I don't want you to have great acts of faith. I want you to live a life of faithfulness. And by the way, a Jewish man wrote this, this passage. Man, I wish we could just change this to the hall of faithfulness. Because that's what he's saying here. All these people, and if you read the chapter, please read the chapter by yourself. It is talking about all these people who live faithful lives, friends. And they showed up every time. See, I know, I know. For some of you, you're like, man, I've, I'm going through so much, Naeem, and I really don't see God showing up. I get that. But have you shown up? Have you shown up? And you're like, I can barely show up. I'm saying show up. Just show up. Show up like you are, like not ready for a Zoom call. You know what I'm saying? Just half-dressed, like whatever. But you show up. You show up. And that's what it means to be dedicated, committed, um, loyal. You're, so, you're moving from this idea of belief in God to supporting God. So let's just ask the question, right? Are you supporting God? Are you dedicated and loyal and committed to what God's doing? Are you doing that? Are you, are you supporting God's word? Well, what, do you, what do you mean by that, Naeem? Well, I mean, you read God's word and do you do it? You're like, well, 
I, I know it's tough. I'm all about grace. But at some point, you, you can't just brush off the values of Jesus. When he says turn the other cheek, you don't go, yeah, 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 but, that, but dude, you don't know. You don't know what it's like. Like when Jesus talks about love and forgiveness, when he talks about not holding on to bitterness, when he talks about justice, when he talks about grace, when he talks about all the things that we've been talking about here. Friends, we have no excuse. We have no excuse to kind of go, oh, well, 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 I, well it's, it's a different time. Uh, yeah, but it comes down to living a life. Are you committed? Are you dedicated? Are you loyal? Are you supporting God's word? What about supporting God's work? Are you doing that physically? Uh, let's, let, come on, let's talk about this. Are you physically supporting God's work in our city, in this church, in the world? Let's get real here. Are you financially supporting your local ministry? I mean, if you're not, I mean, what are we doing here? Are we faithfully living the life that God's calling us to live? Are we supporting God's work? And a mosaic I've said it before, we are a great investment. So if you're thinking, name, I want to do that, we'll jump on. You know, people think about tithing 10%. We're like, hey, we are all about percentage givers. You don't have to, you can start with 1%. But again, what you're doing with even 1% of giving, and people have done that over the years, they're monthly committed to 1%, 2%, and they've gone to 10 and more. What are you doing? You are growing faithfulness in your life by supporting the work of of God. What about supporting God's will? Are you committed? Are you dedicated? Are you going to be loyal to the process that God has put you in, on? Are you going to do that? Or are you going to quit on the process? Friends, these are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. See, faith, you think, faith could open doors, but it's faithfulness that gives us the courage to walk through them. That's what it is. And for some of us, the reason why we, are, uh, we seem to be very discouraged is because we have not grown faithfulness in us. We think faith, and we just think we just have to have acts of magic. And that's not what Scripture is telling us. No, it's not about that. It's about growing faithfulness in your life. See, faith will say, and it's cool, right? It says, mountain, you move. And we love that idea, right? We love the passage of Scripture. But if you, if you look at the deeper meaning here, Faithfulness is basically saying, though the mountain may not move, I'm still moving forward. See, that is the life that God's calling us. That's why a Hebrew man put those Hebrew texts in the book of Hebrews to show us what a life of faithfulness actually looks like. And it's supernatural and it's powerful and it's grown by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you and I have to commit to it because if we commit to it, friends, our life will go and to a different level. And in fact, our relationships will go to a different level. Our anxiety will go to a different level in a good way. It truly will. Let me read you one more passage uh, of the same um, passage, right? Passage of the same passage. Anyways, you know what I mean. Okay, Hebrews eleven thirteen. 13. It says this. These heroes, talking about all those people, right? He says, these heroes all died still clinging to their faith or faithfulness, not even receiving all that they had been promised. But they, but they, I love this, but they saw beyond the horizon the fulfillment of their promises and gladly embraced it from afar. They all lived their lives on earth. This is good. They all lived their lives on earth as those who belong to another realm. Oh man, I love that. Isn't that cool? Now I get it. It's the Prasin translation. It's a prayer phrase translation. But the heart of it, it's true, isn't it? Because people who live at a level of faithfulness that you and I have experienced in our lives and we're thankful for it, they live on a different realm, it seems like. Nothing affects them or things that affect us doesn't affect them. That's what God is calling us to live. To live our days and to the end, in a life of faithfulness. This past Sunday, I was actually at a funeral. Uh, and it was my father-in-law, um, actually it was my brother-in-law's father. My brother-in-law, um, Paul, his, uh, his dad passed away. And uh, his dad was a pastor. His dad was a pastor. In fact, he was the first guy to give me a shot at preaching my first message at his church. It was the first service I ever did. And side note, I actually sang in that service. We have burned the tape. 
and it was taped back then. We have burnt it, but, and the sermon was not good at all. But anyways, he gave me my first shot. But do you know, he was in ministry for 65 years. I don't know about you guys, but uh, man, I, give me a life of faithfulness than great acts of faith. I mean, that's so much deeper, isn't it? 65 years. And at his funeral, they read Matthew 25, 21, which says, And the master was full of praise. And he said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. See, I truly believe that if you and I want to be mature followers of Jesus, if we want to step into the reality that God wants us to experience in our relationships, in our marriages, in our, um, in our business dealings, then we have to learn what it means to have a, uh, a life of faithfulness, what it means to live dedicated to each other, loyal to each other, committed to each other. See, that's the relationship that God's inviting you into. And if you think, man, I think I've quit on God, the good thing is he's not, he's not quit. He hasn't quit on you. Because this whole idea of faithfulness is his idea. And he doesn't quit on you. And so if you're hearing this and you're going, I really want that relationship back, um, good news. You let go, he never did. He never did. Because he's uh, he's faithful. He's faithful. In fact, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. And so today is a new day for you. For you to step into God's faithfulness with a relationship with him, but also a relationship that, um, that grows with him to be faithful in the lives of other people as well. Man, let's live that kind of life. Let me pray for us. Lord God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you, God, for what we have heard and what we've been challenged by. Father, I pray that we would not get stuck on this idea of a passive faith that, that basically puts this pressure on our performance even. It's, it's so strange. It's, it's like, God, we don't live and experience the way we, the things we want to experience because of a lack of faith. God, I pray we reject that because that's just toxic. God, I, I, I just pray that we understand that faith that you're talking about is a faith that comes alongside. It's a faith that's loyal and committed and dedicated regardless what season we might be in and regardless of the failures that we face and the temptations we have to wrestle through. It just does not quit. Father, I pray for that kind of faith because it's faith to its fullness, its faithfulness. And I pray for that. God, for some of us, we start today. We start by saying, Jesus, I give you my life. I've quit on you, but now I'm just saying I don't want to. Father, I thank you that your faithfulness never ends. So today, as some of us are saying, Jesus, I, I, want, I, I, I want to come back. You, God, your, your arms are wide open. So, Father, I pray that they would say, Jesus, I give you my life. Would you, would you forgive me of my unfaithfulness? And would you fill me with your faithfulness? Will you fill me by the power of your spirit? God, I pray for that. And for others of us, God, I pray for all the things we have quit on and all the people we have quit on. God, I pray you would restore them to us. That, God, that you would grow because we're willing. You would grow this spiritual fruit in us to, that would affect every area of our lives. God, I thank you for this. 
Thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.